it's play, play, play all day long with these two. Though sometimes they need a break from each other, just like any siblings do. Um, we have a baby gate inside, or doggy gate, um, to break up the space, but uh, it doesn't look very good. So I'm gonna build a nice looking one to replace it. So let's get to it. If you watched my video on how I built the workshop barn doors, you'll see that this is a miniature version of that. Tongue and groove boards for the body, and trim on either side to give it some style and sturdiness. I planned for this door to be 36 inches tall, but started by cutting these TNG boards to 38 inches. That way, I could trim it later to the right dimensions while making it square. The glue up might get a little messy, so I rolled out a large sheet of paper to keep the mess under control. These H-style pipe clamps will make this glue up much easier. To keep the pipes from getting covered in glue, I put a strip of tape on the tops. One by one, I put glue into the groove of each board and pressed it into its neighboring board until I had all eight boards connected. Then I added weight above each bar to keep the boards flat as the glue dried. Without the weight, the boards would want to pop away and make it all wavy. When I took it out of the pipe clamps, it looks great. It was flat and sturdy. So now I need to trim it down to the correct dimensions. I used a drywall square to mark a straight line from both sides. Marking it from both sides ensures that my line is perfectly square. I cut that with the circular saw, just freehanding it. If I go slow, I don't need a guide. From the freshly cut edge, I marked 36 inches and made another cut to get the final height. The width also needs to be trimmed down to fit in my hallway. This is made up of eight boards, so it was easy to measure from the center to get a symmetrical slab. These boards were a little rough on both sides, so I sanded the surfaces really well, working up to 220 grit. Next is time for the trim. I decided to spend a few extra bucks and get special select boards that are perfectly straight and don't have any imperfections like cracks or knots. I first cut the four boards to frame around the edges. I used glue and brad nails to attach them. These boards will really hold this thing together and make it super sturdy. Now I could custom cut the diagonals. I laid the boards over their ideal position, carefully marked them, and cut them to fit. One board spans the entire diagonal and two boards complete the X. I repeated the same process on the other side, so both are identical. The construction of the door is nearly complete, but right now I need to do another round of sanding. This is to make sure all the trim has smooth seams and the edges are super flat as well. The last piece to add to the door is the top trim. I measured and marked to make sure it sits right in the middle. There's a bunch of nail holes all over this door. I used wood filler to fill all the holes as well as the seams on the side edges. Building something like this requires a lot of sanding. So here's one more round to smooth out the wood filler. On this round, I also softened some of the edges by hand. There's nothing worse than getting poked on a sharp corner. It's time to paint the door. It takes several coats of white on each side to get solid coverage. So to keep it clean in between coats, I put it on a dolly so I could roll it into the workshop. I want to take this moment to thank all my patrons. You are all rock stars. There are some unique projects in the works, so if you want to support what I do, 
and join in on the fun. The link is in the description. All right, so the door is done, but in order to complete the frame, I need to make beams that attach to the wall on either side. One beam will be for the door hinges and the other for the latch. I started with two 4x4 pieces and used my table saw to rip them down and make them a bit thinner. This also takes away the large rounded edges. It took four passes per beam. I took the two beams outside and sanded them all the way to 220 grit. This smoothed out any imperfections from the table saw cuts. I also added a much smaller round back into the two corners that will not be against the wall. These guys got painted the same color white as the door. I should mention that I used semi-gloss paint for all of this. We're very close to mounting on the wall. I figured it would be much easier to attach the hinges ahead of time. So that's what I did. The beams will eventually get top caps to match the top of the door. So I popped in the screws for this beam with that in mind. Before I started installation, I gave this area a really good cleaning. One of the cool features about this door is it's entirely off the ground and has a minimum of two inches of clearance between it and the floor. This makes it possible to keep the ground clean, which is unlike the old baby gate where the dirt and dust would collect at the base and not be a simple cleanup. Installation was relatively easy. Since I already put the hinges on, I just had to set the door on blocks to raise it up two inches then drive in some lag screws into the stud behind the wall. These are the same type of lag screws that I use to build my workbench. They can handle a bunch of weight, which is good because this door definitely has some weight to it. All right, for the other beam, I had to make the adjustments that I anticipated having to make. The beam was too wide for the gap between the door and the wall. I marked how much I needed to trim and then took it out to my table saw to cut. I put painter's tape along the cut lines to prevent any chip out from my nicely painted sides. I only had one lag screw left, so for now I just put in the one. However, I ran into a little problem here. The latch I'm using needs the gap to be pretty small, and by the looks of it, I trimmed off too much from the beam. I had no option but to make another that was slightly bigger to fill that gap. There we go, much better. I was very specific with the latch for this doggy gate. This is a secret gate latch, and it took me a while to find one in this color. It has a dummy knob on the front and a hidden button on top that you press to activate the latch. This was a project requested by the boss lady. So now that it's 95% done, I had to get her approval. Yeah, I think it needs like a little damper because it goes like the recoil. I'm just thinking of the dog jumping on it too. We'll definitely know that he's jumping on it. We'll put a damper on it, but it's beautiful, thank you. I picked up some more lag screws. So I popped in three more to secure this beam. The last thing to add is the top caps to the beams. Right now, the door has the ability to swing further into the threshold than it should. So the top cap on the right side needs to be able to stop it. I custom cut these two pieces as much as I could. 
the one for the latch side needs to stop the door, and the one for the hinges side needs extra clearance as the door opens normally. Plus, they need to fit around the doilies that cover the corners. I used a drill to scuff up the top of the beam and the bottom of the cap, so there's good gluing surface. I did the same to the other side as well. I left these untouched for 24 hours so the glue could completely cure. This door works great. It's a little loud when you close it, so to fix that, I put a clear damper piece on the inside of the top cap that stops the door. And this thing is done. It's been working great to keep these rascals separated, mostly during meal times so they don't eat each other's food. I'm sure this thing will get a bunch of dirty paw prints over time, but the semi-gloss paint makes it easy to clean. We're really happy with how well this turned out. It feels like it was meant to be there. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. Yes, hello. You're the star. You're the star of the show. Yes, you are. Okay, okay, jeez Louise. Say so you're sorry. Say so you're sorry. Okay, apology accepted. Are you sorry? Yeah, you look a little sorry. <laughs>